So uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Gallini. I'm the manager here at the International Programs Office and I'm uh, joined by my colleague, uh, Nikki Gale. And we're uh, very uh, grateful to be joined by Dr. Margaret today, who is going to just talk about um, academic uh, expectations uh, and the environment in the Faculty of Arts and Science. And we think this is just really um, important information to be able to share with you to help you succeed during your exchange at Queen's. And uh, speaking as a, a former international student uh, who, who came to Queen's, I, I know that I could have done with some of these uh, tips before I started my studies here. So um, Dr. Margaret will be uh, leading this presentation and uh, we invite you to drop any questions you have uh, into the chat. Uh, we'll probably hold most of the questions towards the end unless there are um, uh, particularly pertinent questions. Um, but we are very, very excited uh, for you to be uh, coming next semester and some of you may have heard uh, that we've had a little bit of snow here today already. Uh, so um, that's definitely something that you can uh, look forward to uh, in, in January. Anyway, without uh, further ado, I'll pass this over to uh, Dr. Margaret. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm so excited to be here with you today, and I'm so excited that so many of you came forward and, and registered for the session and attending it. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the territory that uh, Queen's University is situated on. So um, Queen's University, this is, I'm in my office right now um, and uh, at Queen's, and Queen's University is situated on traditional Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee territory. And uh, I just want to say that we are very grateful that we are able to live here, to learn here, and to play here on those lands. Okay, so uh, as Tom mentioned, my name is Dr. Margaret. That's what everybody calls me that. Uh, my full name is Dr. Margaret Maliszewska. I work in the Department of Languages, Liturgies and Cultures. I am an assistant professor and academic advisor. Uh, in the department uh, and in as part of my job is obviously uh, meeting with students, um, advising them on course selection, plan selection, uh, directing them to proper resources and everything else that comes in between. Uh, my office, if you ever want to drop by and say hello, I al also always encourage students to do so is in Kingston Hall. Uh, on the top floor, room 416. And I also pop, uh, included my email here. If you want to get in touch with me by email, ask any question, please free to do so. Uh, I hold uh, my first undergraduate and graduate degree. Um, I um, completed that at university in Poland. And then I completed my second master's degree at the University of Toronto. And then finally, I did my PhD here at Queen's. So I do have um, solid knowledge of uh, European or and North American um, um, university systems. And hopefully that knowledge will help you with the transition to Queen's. Okay, so. Uh, We'll begin with the structure of a semester at Queen's. And the first thing you have to know that it's a very, very short term. It has only 12 weeks. And trust me, it goes by very, very fast. The classes will begin on the 10th of January, uh, which is Monday, and it will end on 8th of April. During the first two weeks of classes, you, we call it shopping around phase. Uh, that means that for the first two weeks, you can add and drop classes uh, as you like with no academic or financial penalties. Um, that means that um, you thought, you know, you all probably requested courses that you want to take at Queen's, but what happens if you go to class and you don't like the material or you don't like the prof or you don't like anything and you wanna switch. So. During those two first, two, two first weeks, you are able to do that with no pretty much consequences. Um, next, uh, another important date is the reading week. Reading week is uh, just a week long break, midterm, and it will be from the 21st to 25th of February. 
during that, uh, students usually try to catch up on course materials. Uh, and because it's winter in Canada, some choose to uh, travel to warmer climates. Uh, it's really up to you what you do with that. There is, um, there is really no rules what to do on the reading week. And the term will end on the 8th of April, as I mentioned. And then you will have a few days to prepare for your final exam. So it's called pre-exam study period. It's from 9 to the 13th April. And for the 14th and 30th April, we have final examinations. And uh, examinations, that means uh, written examinations uh, in exams halls with proctors. Uh, everybody in the class will write the exam on the same day. Um, and so please do not book any return travel, uh, any return home, because uh, until you know when your last exam is because you do not want to, we will, Faculty of Arts and Science will not make exceptions. You know, if you book your flight earlier than your exam is, they will not allow you to write the exam earlier. And just a side note, 15th of April is Good Friday in Canada. And that means that uh, everything will be closed, uh, including university and no examinations will be held that day. Okay. So um, when it comes to structural classes, I don't know what you're used to, but uh, I assume that most of you are, all of you are coming here just for one term. So you will see the courses that you will be taking will be three unit courses. And three unit course is a semester long course. You may also see, uh, when you're looking for courses, you may also see six unit courses, and those courses are full year long, so fall and winter term, and you have to take them together. You cannot just split them, just, you cannot take the one, just one half of the full year course. Uh, most classes uh, are taking um, place twice a week for 90 minutes. So for example, Spanish 111 beginning Spanish class will be on Tuesday from 10 to 11, and then on Thursday from 8.30 to 10. And the classroom will be, will be the same on both days. And uh, please know that every class will end 10 minutes before the official ending time. So that class from 8.30 to 10 will end in reality 10 to 10, so 9.50. And that 10 minutes will give you opportunity to go from one building to another, from one class to another. So if you see in your schedule that your class ends at 10 and another class starts at 10, please do not, uh, please don't stress out because you have that 10 minutes before the next class actually begins. So, and our campus at Queens and Kingston is very, very small. And it's 10 minutes is plenty of time to get from one corner of, uh, of, of campus to another. So that shouldn't be uh, any problem whatsoever. Um, while you might be searching for courses already, uh, you, might wanna, you might have seen um, that there are different types of classes. We have lectures, we have seminars, we have tutorials, we have labs. And these all mean different things. So lectures are usually larger courses where a professor does all the talking. There might be some discussions in the meantime. The seminars would be usually third and fourth year courses, um, which are usually much smaller. Um, for example, our uh, introduction to linguistics course, which is a lecture type course has 150 students. And our seminar course, um, German literature of the 18th century would have seven students. Um, so uh, seminars generally smaller, lectures generally larger. Uh, with the lectures, uh, especially in the first and second year classes, I often go with labs or tutorials. Um, so tutorials, Again, you know, I'm calling an introduction to linguistics course. 
Uh, it has tutorials uh, and it has small classes, I think 25, um, class of 25, and they meet every week. And you can ask your teaching assistant any questions related to the material that you discuss in lectures. With labs, labs are usually in biology or chemistry where you do those fancy experiments. I don't really know what you do in labs, but that's, uh, that's more for sciences. Uh, and um, so that would be how the courses look like, what you can expect. The earliest class at Queen's starts at 8.30 a.m. And the latest class will end at 5.30 p.m. Uh, so between 5.30 and 6.30, it's, the, 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 there shouldn't be any classes. And then um, there might be some, there, there will be evening classes, usually three hour long from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. All right. So um, the assessment is probably something that you, that might be very, very new or uh, not something that you're used to uh, from your home university. Uh, the assessments in courses will be very varied, varied and it will depend on the level and size of the class. So uh, usually generally in larger classes, in large lectures, you will have fewer assessments. So for example, three tests, that's it, or maybe some small assignment to do. Uh, in seminar time, you will have uh, presentations, you can have group work, case studies, uh, discussions, and, and so on, a creative product, pro projects. Um, the general idea is that you will be tested much more frequently than you might be used to. Um, the participation and attendance are usually part of the assessment, so there would be a grade for attending and participating actively in the class. It's usually from 10 to 20 percent. Um, in the mid of the term, so usually from week six to week eight, there would be a midterms um, in most of the courses and midterms are pretty much a bigger test that will include probably the first six, five weeks of the classes of the material. Uh, so they're quite serious and most of the courses will have it. Um, the other thing is that every assessment has to be included in the syllabus, in the course outline. So once you get the uh, access to the course outline, review it car carefully, what, what the expectations are, uh, how many tests do you have, what sort of assessments uh, can you expect from, from a particular course. Um, and um, just to give you an example of assessments, uh, here we have a little blanket for a Mohawk class. And another example for Indigenous Studies class, there was a, a student produced a zine uh, at the end of the, of the course, and that was published on our website. Uh, so again, you can expect anything. That's, that's the bottom line when it comes to assessments. Um, on your course outline, you will be, uh, should the course outline for every course should include the official grade uh, scale at Queen's. So um, you, uh, the Queen's goes by um, letter grades. Uh, during the term, you might be receiving percentage grades for your assignment, but your final grade will be always a letter. Anything be above 50% uh, and up is a passing grade. Um, and the letter grades are then converted into GPA, so grade point equivalents, and that will be included on your official transcript. Letter grade and the GPA, that goes on your official transcript that will be sent from Queens to your home university after you finish your exchange. All right. So uh, there are two things, two systems or that I would like to talk to you about today. One is Solos and one is OnQ. 
So we'll start with SOLOS. Uh, uh, SOLOS is a student center system. Mm, the abbreviation comes from Student Online University System. SOLOS apparently in Gaelic means knowledge and light. Um, that's, um, you know, it's, it's quite funny because many students find it very confusing. So uh, they don't see either knowledge or light. So if you feel a bit overwhelmed by SOLOS, please don't feel bad because many domestic students have problems with it. Uh, so it is a bit challenging to navigate it from the very beginning if you're not familiar with it. So um, this SOLUS is a tool to manage your academics uh, during your time at Queens here. Um, uh, you can search for courses in SOLUS, you can see your timetable, uh, you can look up the classroom and prof uh, professor's name in SOLUS for, particular, for each course. Um, you can add and drop courses, although I, I understand that adding and dropping courses or definitely adding might not might be complicated for for exchange students but uh, this is where IPO and the departments will help you with that you will uh, your final grades will be posted in solos and you can see your unofficial transcript or request official transcript uh, from solos as well so it's a it's a very expanse uh, very big system that accommodates many different functions. And this is more or less how you would get into SOLUS. So on the, this, is, this is the Queen's homepage. On the right top corner, you will have search and sign in. Once you click that, this menu will open up and you will just click on My Queen's Use SOLUS Manager and More. And that will lead you you will need to sign in with your Queen's credentials, so net ID and password. And again, this is uh, how SOLUS looks like from student's perspective. So again, you can search for classes here uh, and you can also do other academics. So here under academics, you can um, do, if you click on add academics, you can see uh, class schedule, um, adding, dropping, grades, um, transcripts, request official transcripts or view unofficial transcript and so on. So um, quite um, many functions to do here, uh, but um, you know, it's, uh, if it feels overwhelming at the beginning, please don't, don't stress out about it because it's definitely something that many students at Queens struggle with. And we can always uh, either, you know, any departments that you are housed with or international programs office are more than happy to help you navigate through SOLUS. Okay, so the second student system is called ONQ. Uh, and it's nothing else than learning management system. So I maybe in your home universities, you are familiar with Moodle or Brightspace or Blackboard. These are all terms for different learning management systems. And uh, actually, uh, Queens uh, is using Brightspace, but Queens likes to uh, name everything according to Queens. So our Brightspace is actually called OnQ. Uh, the first thing you have to know is that not every professor or not every course will have OnQ. Um, the OnQ is something like you know little website for your for your course and uh, the professors when they have it they would post uh, course outlines in on queue they might post readings mm, they uh, might post uh, you know um, your assignments instructions and so on so a lot of different functionalities and a lot of different um ideas that you know professors use uh, on Q4 uh, but it really really depends on the professor so there is really no consistency from course to course when it comes to on Q. The biggest uh, function that on Q has is that it's used as communication tool 
So professors either write um, announcements in on queue that always come on the, on the homepage of a course. So once you click on a course, uh, you will see announcements on the first page and announcement about pretty much anything, um, assignments, deadlines, and so on. Or uh, some instructors prefer to send emails. And so they may use the on queue to send any student in the class an email. And this is where uh, it is very, very important to check your Queen's emails because if you miss a deadline, um, but professor announced it, it's going to be much harder to make it up uh, to submit your assignments. Uh, just because uh, if you haven't checked your email, if you haven't seen the assignment uh, as deadline, if you haven't checked the announcements in on queue, that might lead to more problems. So please, please, please check on queue pages frequently for announcements and also check your Queen's email account frequently. Um, another thing that professors use on Q4 is uh, they set up discussions uh, for groups or individuals. They would send blogs. So you would interact with other students in on Q. You very often uh, on Q is used to submit your final assignments or any assignments that you have. And many, many courses in on Q also have grade book. And so this is a great tool to check your grades throughout the term, how you're progressing. And to show you how to get to on queue, uh, again, we're starting with uh, Queen's homepage. You would go to search and sign first, and then there is a special link to on queue uh, from there. And this is how on queue, I have access to many courses um, uh, in my department. So you see different things here. So you will have in, in a 2022 winter term, you will see all your courses here. Uh, right now, these courses are inactive. That means that they're not open to students yet. So sometimes uh, professors will only open their on queue courses on the first day of classes, okay? So if on January 9th or 8th, you do not see any on queue courses, for the courses you have chosen, you registered for, please don't be alarmed because um, some professors just like to release those courses on the very first day of teaching. Um, anyway, so that's what we will see when you log into OnQueue. And then this is an example, this is a screenshot from my course. So uh, you will have, uh, you might have this, again, these are not uniform. They may look totally different. Um, you, but you, normally you should see a course outline somewhere. You may see the breakdown by weeks or um, every class. And uh, I have structured that. So students have primary reading, so they know that those are the articles that they have to read before the class. Oh, sorry. And then um, they have to watch the video. And then this is how they submit the work homework for that particular class. Um, so that's, uh, it's a really nice tool for professors and I think for students as well, because it keeps everything together. All right, so uh, every time I'm, um, I'm talking to international or exchange students, uh, the question about, um, about textbooks comes up very, very frequently. So um, where you can get your textbook or course materials? The first resource would be on Q. Uh, many professors do post articles or reading materials in on Q directly. Uh, some will have um, books, textbooks on so-called reserve in, uh, in the library, main library, staff library. Uh, so what you do with the reserve, so professors have there is like one or two textbooks and they will put it on the uh, reserve uh, list. And so you'd go to, the, to the, the main desk and said like, I want to, I want to loan this, I want to borrow this uh, uh, textbook for that particular course. And you have, you usually have hours. So I would say two to 
one to two hours um, to have that book. Uh, and then you have to return after a short period of time. This is done so that every student in the course has access to it. If you want to buy your own textbook, uh, the campus bookstore, which is also called Clark Hall, will uh, have your textbook. Um, you probably know that textbook are, textbooks in Canada are horribly expensive. Um, uh, so check before you buy a new textbook, check with other students. Uh, and I actually included the Facebook group here, textbook exchange, if uh, you can buy a used textbook. Um, I actually have done a, a research on it because I, I emailed uh, students on, on Facebook to, to ask uh, if they needed the textbooks in the courses um, and if yes, what, what courses specifically. So pretty much what they told me is that for most courses, you do not need to buy a new textbook. However, there are some courses like language classes, for example, that uh, you will need to buy a new textbook because those Courses, those textbooks will come for with access codes to online component to online exercises that uh, you really have to have to complete the, the course. Uh, so there are different different options for the textbook, um, but again, I think um, between software library reserve on Q and the textbook exchange, hopefully you will find less expensive uh, solution when it comes to the textbooks. Okay, so um, I think uh, I would like to talk to you uh, about time management because this is something that you might not be used to uh, from your home university. So I, I mentioned that uh, the semester at Queens is extremely short. It's only 12 weeks and uh, you are actually expected to work on each course from between eight to 10 hours per week. So if you're taking five courses, that may add up to 40 hours a week. And of course, in some courses, there would be less work uh, because you might have uh, knowledge about the material. Uh, it might sound familiar. And in some courses, you might just Put a little bit more of work. So it, it really, really depends on the course. Um, in the midterm weeks, uh, as I mentioned, week six to eight, uh, the, there is a major test in each course. So be prepared. Um, and um, because there's just so many assignments, very often students are tested in their first week of classes already. So after you finish your first week, uh, your second class or second week, uh, you are expected to write a quiz, for example, in language classes. So what I really recommend is to manage your time effectively is to gather your course outlines for all your courses and look when the deadlines for each assessment um, are. So if you have a quiz in week five and six, uh, you can use different methods of organizing. You know how to organize yourself, I hope. Uh, by by you know by uh, by your age right now, so uh, you can. I have students using spreadsheets to kind of put all the assignments for all five courses, so they know um, what to do for each week and how to prepare for each course um, effectively. Uh, so whatever you do, uh, you can use it. Uh, but course outline is your biggest friend, honestly. It should contain all the information that you need. Uh, main thing is that you know when each assignment is due. Um, also in terms of time management, preparing for classes, uh, you know, doing reading uh, before each class, um, studying vocab for language classes and so on is extremely helpful because it helps you to retain the material better. Um, attending classes uh, and doing your homework also helps immensely. Um, and summarizing lectures, uh, especially if your uh, 
native uh, tongue is not English, uh, summarizing the, it in English, it's extremely helpful to retain the information and just getting better academically. Um, so again, when it comes to managing your time here at Queens, remember it goes by fast. There would be probably more assignments than you used to. And uh, some courses will be okay for cramming the material, you know, like I don't know, I can imagine a history course that, you know, you may just read for the test, uh, you know, spend a day or two to prepare for the midterm. But in some courses like language classes, you have to study systematically and regularly to do well. And what we want to do for you here that you do well here at Queens. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is um, talk about professors at Queens. So when I was at uh, when I was my undergrad at University of Poland, you know, professors were gods. You do not approach them, you do not talk to them, and if you don't talk them to them, you use the full title and um, be very, very, very polite. Um, here at Queens, things are different. Uh, the professors are definitely not as strict and uh, they are quite friendly. Uh, the, your teaching assistants will be quite friendly and uh, professors and TAs really want you to succeed. Um, however, it does not mean that you can address your professors informally. So, um, even though some professors are okay with addressing them by their first name, uh, always proceed with caution. Um, if you talk to them or email them, uh, always use the titles uh, unless you have permission to address them by their first name. Uh, so, you know, for um, it's always, if they have a PhD, doctor, whatever, Dr. Smith would be uh, appropriate. Uh, if you're not sure if they have a PhD, Professor Smith would be okay to use uh, in any context. Um, before you email, uh, please make sure that you check the course outline if you have some questions about assessments or deadlines or whatever, because that information is always included in it or should be included in a course outline. So. Uh, Professors are not very happy if they get, you know, 10 emails from students about the same thing that is already included in the syllabus. So you do not want to, <laughs> you want to have, you know, leave good, good impression, right? Um, always include your student number and course uh, number uh, in your email. So, you know, like even in your title, say, you know, Link, link 100, uh, student, student number, and question about something. Uh, because that helps, you know, some professors that teach three, two or three more courses a term. So, and if they have large classes, they will not remember your name. So this is a way for them to um, identify the problem and uh, the class, the student in class better. Um, and sometimes, uh, very often, uh, professors right now do include that information on the on the course outline, how to address them, and what to include in their email. And uh, professors are usually very busy people, so if you do not get an answer within twenty four hours, um, don't be alarmed because sometimes it takes them a few days to to reply. Uh, and again, sometimes very often professors do include the response time in their course outline, so you know what to expect. Uh, because um, I don't know what you used to, but uh, office hours are very, every professors uh, and most of the te teaching assistants will have office hours. And the office hours will be posted on the course outline and very often in on queue as well. And uh, they might be in-person office hours, um, depending on how the pandemic goes. Um, many professors switch in the fall term to Zoom uh, appointments. Uh, so in any case, 
they have office hours and office hours is really, really great resource for you as students because you can, uh, if you struggling with some part of the material in the course, if you have questions about anything, you can always book an appointment uh, with a professor and ask those questions one-on-one -on -one during their office hours. You can do the same, obviously, for the teaching assistants. Uh, so it's, it is really, really great opportunity for you to get clarification on the course material. Um, and many, many professors are genuinely happy to see students. And um, it's also a great way to get to know your profs, uh, you know, to have a fuller experience here at Queens. All right. Um, so when you feel that you need help, um, the first stop would be your course instructor or your teaching assistant, if there is one, because not every course will have teaching assistant. Uh, and so this is your, your course instructor or teaching, teaching assistant will be great resource to ask questions about the course material. If you find yourself that you're struggling in more general um, aspects of academic life, such as time management or essay writing, essay structuring, or um, presentations, um, anything that relates to generally academic life, the Student Academic Success Services is the place to go because they have workshops on pretty much anything academic. They have a writing center that will help students to write their essays. And they also have English as additional language help. So if English is not your native tongue, um, this might be a good way to, to go to check um, your essays, check, cl get clarification or anything that, that you might need. And good news guys, it's all free, okay? So don't worry about you know, not going because it's all available and it's all accessible to all students. If you do need um, accommodation, such as additional time, uh, private room to write your, uh, your test or uh, use of computer for writing any assignments, then you would need um, to contact Queen's Student Accessibility Services. Um, you will get an official letter from those services that you will hand in to the instructor of each course. Uh, so that the instructors know how to structure your test, how much time do you need for each test, or if you need, you know, special arrangements such as private room or computer, uh, that will be also arranged for you. Another resource that you may use if you need help um, would be to contact the undergraduate chair or undergraduate assistant uh, of the department that you take most of your courses. Um, and again, I'm reiterating that I'm very, very happy to hear from, from exchange students. So please, if you don't know who the undergraduate chair or assistant is, you can always email me and I will do all my best to, to help you and to navigate you through things or to uh, guide you into to proper resources. Uh, Faculty of Art and Science um, also has academic advisors. Uh, the, I believe that the Faculty of Arts and Science is located in Dunning Hall. However, I believe that all the crew right now is working from home and I'm not sure how the situation will look like in, in, in the winter term. So, but you can always go um, and book an appointment. It doesn't matter if it's going to be in person or online. You can, you, that's an additional resource uh, to use. And of course, the place you know very well, International Programs Office, is here to help you uh, to answer any questions you may have. Uh, and uh, we are really, really happy to hear from you. So please, please, please do not suffer in silence. If you have a problem, talk to someone about it, okay? Because we can help you. And we want you really honestly to have the greatest time of your life here at Queens 
and to help you succeed uh, uh, so that you are happy, you have a good experience, and you also have a wonderful academic experience. So please do reach out if you, if you need anything. And uh, the last thing I would like to talk to you about today is, um, I don't know, like you, you might be scared, like I might scare you. Uh, I hope it's not too bad because all, you know, all those assignments, all those assessments, all those projects, uh, participation and attendance, and uh, it all adds up. Um, so how do you enjoy life? Um, so we, when you are here, obviously you're coming from different, different culture or um, a different university system. So we do want you to enjoy life here when you're here at Queens, not only at the academics, but also just life in general. So how do we balance the life and the school. Um, I, my biggest recommendation would be to try to make friends with your classmates uh, because many Canadian students are really genuinely interested and curious about people from other cultures. So use that to your advantage. And I understand that some people are just chronically shy. I'm shy. Uh, and it would be probably, I, I can imagine how how difficult that could be, but this is just, this is your term here at Queen. So please make all the effort to make friends and get to know people. And that can happen very easily, you know, like you have a group project in your course, you know, like you work in a smaller group with a few people, that's a great opportunity to, to get connected to, to, to students or you have a um, group discussion or anything like that. So, um, use that as an opportunity to, to make friends. Uh, Kingston is not a big city. I don't know if you researched it, but it's not a big city, but it's very pretty city. Um, and uh, there is uh, a few things to discover. So go ahead and check out the, our few museums and, and galleries and just uh, town in general. Uh, you can, if you, I don't know how long you will be staying in Canada after your exchange ends, but you can definitely use, and some exchange students stay a bit longer and choose to travel in Canada. And also uh, remember that you have that midterm uh, week, the reading week, um, that you can use for traveling if you don't have like big academic load that you need to take care of that. Um, the Queen's International Center, or QUIC, uh, organizes a lot of events um, during the term, uh, not only for international, but also for domestic students. So this is another great place to check out if you want to get involved with Queen's. And of course, because we are on um, uh, indigenous land, uh, for direction Indigenous Student Center would be a great place to go and learn about First Nations um, of Canada. Um, you may, if you find yourself, you have too much free time on your hands, do consider joining a student club, which is uh, Alma Mater Society, AMS, or even you can consider volunteering within the Kingston organization. There are many, many organizations in Kingston that do need volunteers on a regular basis. So you definitely, that's something that, you know, if you're passionate about, um, you can definitely uh, use that, uh, use your time. They will definitely um, be very grateful for your time and efforts. And I believe that's all when it comes to the presentation and we uh, will be very happy to answer any questions you may have.